Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are celebrating Father's Day today. I pray it's a glorious day for you. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville. And uh, it's just my privilege to be here to worship with you today. Uh, it's good to be back from conference. That was a, uh, uh, you know how conferences are. They're both fun and exhilarating and exhausting. So we've been re trying to recover all week. But I appreciate those who filled in for us while we were gone. So it's really good to be here. And I pray that you have an experience with the Holy Spirit today. You experience God maybe in a new way. Or you hear something you might not have heard before that truly helps you to grow closer to God through your life. And your works and your, your prayers and all the things that, that relate to your spiritual life. It is a beautiful day, hopefully a rainy day, to be in worship together. Whether you're joining us online or here in the space I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor, and it is a gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful time to be worshiping together. As we start our time of worship, a couple of reminders as we begin this time together. If you are worshiping with us online, we invite you to have something to eat or drink as we participate in Holy Communion each and every week. For those here in the space, 
You are invited later in the service to come forward and you'll receive a gluten-free rice cracker and a sealed cup of juice. And we'll give more instructions about that as we go along. We love to be able to celebrate that sacrament each and every week together, whether we are online or in person. Our responses and our hymns will be guided by our bulletins, either online or what you received as you came in. And that will also give you page numbers, hymns are in the, in the pews or in your online bulletin or on the screen. Um, you will have noticed that we had some wonderful pictures of our fathers and their children in our pre-service slides. And if you missed those, we hope that you will take some time to catch the recording online or to see them in the gathering space before you leave today um, to celebrate with our families. We know we only captured a few handful of them. Um, if we didn't capture you, we'd love to hope that you are celebrating with your family today as well. One note, there's a note in the bulletin that there's a new gathering, an ecumenical coffee with friends. That is a simply a time to get together on Thursday mornings at 9.30 at Hardy's. Um, a time to get together with folks from our congregation and the First Presbyterian Church that's across the street and Trinity Episcopal Church, which is down the street. Um, Several folks got together and said, wouldn't it be nice to simply have some time for conversation? Um, so if you have a free morning, there is no need to prepare or read anything. Simply come one week or all weeks. We would love to have you there as well. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite Melissa Chapman to come forward. There she is. Melissa is one of the three um, lay people we had to go to annual conference this year. And uh, she wants to just make a quick announcement. Hi, um, I'm Melissa, and I was honored to represent Laity at the annual conference. Um, there will be more information about that later, but I will say that it was uh, great worship, um, great food, and great fellowship. So um, I was glad to do that. But I'm here to announce that uh, Pastor Scott and, Lor and Jennifer and Lori are all reappointed to our church for another year. So let's hear it for that. <laughs> Wonderful news. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. You represented us well there. I appreciate your taking that time. And while those things are not entirely uncertain before we go to conference, it's always lovely to see them in print and to return to be worshiping together with our family of faith. And as we begin worship today, we do what we do each week. We light candles, and if you are worshiping online, we invite you to have a source of light with you, perhaps a candle, or we know some of you worship outside, and we invite you to know that there is light around you. We light these candles each week, acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is already at work in our midst, oh, even when our candle lighters go out. The Holy Spirit is at work in our midst. For we know that it's God and the Spirit of God that calls us into this time of worship together. We'll begin worship with our call to worship. If you'd stand and read this together with me, uh, they'll be on the screen or in your bulletin. Gather with your questions, gather with your wonder. For, For the, the God, God who, who creates, creates meets, meets us, us here. here. Gather with your energy, gather with your weariness. For the, For the God, God who, who greets, creates meets, meets us, us here. Gather with your energy, gather with your weariness. For the God, God who, who creates, creates meets, meets us, us here. here. Gather with your sadness, gather with your joy. For the, For the God, God who, who creates meets us, us here. here. Gather with all that you are. For, For the, the God, God who creates and declares, declares it good meets us here. here. Come, Come, let us worship. worship. Please remain standing as we sing the hymn number 62 in the red hymnal, All Creatures of Our God and King. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Wind air. 
the clouds and rain, by which all creatures ye sustain. All praise ye, alleluia. The rising morn in joys rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. Blessings on our way. Alleluia, alleluia. The flowers and fruits that in their grow, let them God's glory also show. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. together in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, our Creator, who speaks and we live, who breathes and we are sustained, who loves and we are renewed. We believe in Christ our Savior, who is born and we see light, who breathes and we have peace, who touches and we are healed. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who guides us and we are empowered who fills us with compassion, who stirs and we become a new creation. Amen. You may be seated.
As we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer, you might want to reference the prayer list that's in the bulletins, uh, both online and in person. Uh, also, I, we heard late this week that Judy Mullen's grandson, Riley Jacobs, is being tested. And so we're praying for good results on that, and they find effective treatment for him. But uh, I know there's many other prayer concerns in your lives, and we, we lift those up to God, knowing that God hears our every prayer. We know that the Holy Spirit is there to enliven us and to uh, actually help us to pray, to give us the strength to pray, give us the words to say, and sometimes when we don't have words to say, the Holy Spirit prays for us. We know that around the world there's, there's strife and conflict, and not only in our country, but other countries where there's warfare. We pray for those people that are caught in the middle of those conflicts. We pray for those children and families who are starving around the world that don't have adequate food, that don't have protection from their government. We know that there are those who are struggling to survive in many different ways, sometimes physically, but other times emotionally. And sometimes you may find yourself here, and that's why we have these candle racks to give you an opportunity to come sometime either before, during, or after the service to, to light a candle to signify that you're inviting the Holy Spirit into whatever issue may be in your life, that you're praying that God will intercede or give you answers, give you direction, courage for a new a new day. But we know that prayer makes a difference, and we know that God hears our prayers. So will you pray with me at this time? Almighty and everlasting God, we gather today to worship you, to lift up your name and song and word. And Lord, we pray that uh, we will sense the presence of your Holy Spirit, that as we celebrate the gift of life, the gift of love, the gift of family, community, church, home, so many, especially fathers today, as we lift them up, Lord, help us to truly be the people you call us to be, to be those who seek justice and resist evil, who, ho who help to rid the world of oppression. Lord, we are people of your, of your peace, people of your hope, and people of your joy. And sh we should live as the resurrected people that we are, that we are made in your image, that we are created by you uh, through the word of God and the Holy Spirit and abiding within us. And let us exercise that grace that we've received and we receive it, receive it only to ourselves, but we also give it to others, that others will know of your love and grace as well, that we can be outwardly facing, that others see that the love of God is something that truly wraps his arms around each and every one of us, that each of us are made in his image and each one of us are of, our, are of sacred worth. Lord, let us be peoples of that message, the message of God's love, God's grace. And God's justice. Lord, we lift these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We're going to continue in worship with the singing of the hymn number 145 of the Red Hymnal or in your online bulletin, Morning Has Broken.
Our scripture lesson comes from the very beginning of your Bible, Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 1. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be lights, and there was lights, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with a seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from night. And let them be for signs for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humans in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the earth all, of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast on the earth and to every bird in the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they are created. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. amen and amen.
You may have noticed that our sanctuary looks a bit different this morning as the red of Pentecost has come down and been replaced by greens. We have entered into what I am calling this year the season of green. It's more accurately called in the church calendar common time or the season after Pentecost or you may have heard it as called kingdom tide. For those of you who have worshiped with us in person or online for a while, may have noticed that this is a rather long season. It stretches all the way from this time of year to late November when we begin Advent. It takes us from the lush beginning days of summer where everything appears to be green around us through the hot, humid days of July and August and into and through that turn towards fall and the beginning of winter days. It's a long season. And if I'm honest, this expanse of time can seem mundane, boring even. And yes, I just said that. It's okay to admit that. As it's not punctuated by those high celebration days like Christmas or Easter or Pentecost. Some years, the green can even kind of just fade into the background. Routine, week in and week out. But I've come to appreciate this common time, the season of green. For the season of green is sometimes where growth happens. The season when our youth go on mission journeys to learn about themselves and others. It's a season of camps where our children learn and grow together. It's a time where some of us, those of us who are tied to academic calendars, have a bit more breathing space as schedules are a little bit different in the summer. It's a time of internships and research projects for our college students. It's also a season of transition for many in many kinds of ways. There's often a time when growth sneaks up on us, when it happens and we barely even recognize it. I shared in our Facebook Daily Devotions a few weeks ago the story of this cross. This, it's a stained grass hand cross. It's designed to be held in your hand, perhaps as you're praying. It's pretty hefty. Some of you may have seen it in my office. It was a gift from the Divinity School at Duke University to the graduates. Each graduating class received one. Each class got the same color, each person in each year. My year happened to be green. And while it's a beautiful object, that's not why it sits in my office. It sits in my office because about 13, 14 years ago now, when I was serving a church in the mountains of North Carolina, it sat in my window. And I was doing children and youth ministry at the time, Christian education, and one of our fairly precocious first graders walked into my office and he picked up this cross and he stared through it like you were looking through a kaleidoscope. And he said, Everything looks different through this. Now, of course, he was just stating a fact. He wasn't making a metaphorical statement, I don't think, although this kiddo might have been, you never know. Um, but it stuck with me, because intended or not, there is a metaphor there. Everything does look different when we look through the cross. But the other reason it stayed with me is because when you look through the green, things do look different. When we look through the season of green as a lens, this expectation that growth and maturation happens when we're barely expecting it. There's power in that. Sometimes we need to be able to sink our feet, to sink our roots deep into this common time together, this ordinary time together. We need to meet together online or in person and even play together to look through the lens of the green, the color of growth and life. We might be surprised about what we learn about ourselves, about God, about each other. And so I hope you will join me, join us in this season of green and growth together. We've begun today with the powerful images and poetry of Genesis 1, when God began to create. And we'll be spending the next couple of weeks exploring this creative power of God and what it means for us. We'll be exploring just a few of the many stories in Genesis 
through this lens this, of this common time of the season of green. We'll be asking a few questions. There are some of the most powerful questions I think we can ask of Scripture. What does this tell us about who God is? What does this tell us about who we are and who we are called to be? And so this morning we begin this season with these powerful words, when God began to create. When God began to create. I love this translation because it gives a sense of the present, powerful, active, continuing force of God. When nothing existed but chaos, God began to create. When nothing existed but chaos, the breath of God swept over the water. When nothing exists but chaos around us, God creates and continues to create. That, that is who God is. And what God creates is good. We hear the rhythm of this in the poetry. God created and God saw that it was good. God created and saw that it was good. God created and it was good. Now I know that we look around our world and we often see what appears to be evidence to the contrary. We may even look at our neighbors or our family and see what appears to be evidence to the contrary. We may look at ourselves and our actions and we do the things we wish we, could, we didn't do and wonder, was I really created good? And many of us, I know, have been in faith backgrounds where perhaps a different message has been said. I can see it in our faces. I know it's written in our hearts at times. I can see it in the thought bubbles over our heads because we want to say, hey, Jennifer, that's great. But when I look at the news, that does not seem like good. And we'll talk about those complicated realities in the next couple of weeks and throughout the season of green. But today I want you to hear this fundamental reality that we hear in Genesis. What God creates is good. Period. That is who God is. One of my favorite big words, and you all know I like to be a nerd every once in a while, is perichoresis. It's a big word that simply means mutual dwelling together. It's used by some theologians to describe the way that God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dwells together. Dwells together in love. It describes this community God has within God's self. And it is out of that community of love, that overflowing power of love, that God creates. So you see, it's not possible for God to not create something that is good. And sometimes I believe we need to hear that affirmation. When we look at our world, we realize it is not as we would like it to be. When we look at ourselves, we recognize that we have sometimes heard messages to the contrary. God, what God creates is good. Then God said, let us make humans in our own image according to our likeness. God created out of love, and it was good. God created in God's own likeness. Now, we often talk about being created in the image of God. You'll hear Scott and I and Lori say that all the time. But what do we mean by that? What does that actually mean? When I was doing children's ministry, sometimes I would ask the kids and they would look at me with these quizzical looks and thinking, does that really mean I look like some big grandfather in the sky? Volumes have been written about what it means to be created in the image of God. And at one level, it's part of our mystery of faith. But on the other level, we have some clues right here within this scripture. If we are created in the image of God, then we are created to create. Now, I am the last person that would, would say I am creative. I had someone come up to me a few weeks ago and say, 
you must be a really creative person. And I said, I don't think so. Because the way our culture shapes creativity, most of us won't claim that label for ourselves. But if we are all made in the image of God, then we are created to create. All creation. And yet we all create in different kinds of ways. If we are created in the image of God, then we are created to be in relationship with God and with each other. If we are created in the image of the one who, has, who created out of this overflowing love, then we are created to be in loving communities with each other. Now again, we see evidence that's different around us, and the next couple of weeks we'll talk about that. But for now, I want us to hear this affirmation that we are each created in the image of God, the one who creates out of love, the one who continues to create, the one who creates us to be in relationship. I ran across some writing this week that reminded me that we are not the first to be in complicated times. We are not the first to be, have lived through times where we feel polarization all around us. I have talked about the prayers of Pogdraig and Tume before. He spent some time in a community in Northern Ireland. This is a community that he describes as being birthed out of a time of conflict there. He writes, what is the form of prayer for conflict? It is sometimes elegant, sometimes ragged. It is sometimes the repetition of a story until a story doesn't need to be repeated anymore. This community, Cormelia, was founded in Belfast in 1965 by Reverend Ray, Reverend Ray Davey. He writes, these were the days before the troubles broke out, the days when troubles were brewing. Questions about jurisdiction of Northern Ireland captivated the political imaginations of individuals and neighborhoods already divided and deepened their divisions. People died, people were frightened. There was need for a place of friendship, a soft place for hard conversations, a meeting place where hostilities could be explored within the context of hospitality. And so in 1965, there was founded this small community on an Irish cliff. From the beginning, the Cormelia community has welcomed those who bring their differences with them. We do not seek to undo differences, but we hope and pray we can learn to hold our differences differently. We believe that the complications of civic, religious, and political life is best explored in community, in the gathered space of cups of tea, shared meals, discussions, debates, disagreements, arguments, where we hope we can find new ways to name old pains. So Padre Gatume wrote a volume of prayers that are born out of this community, out of their common life together. He wrote prayers and published them that are part of that daily life together and offered them to the world. I have found them incredibly powerful. And so I offer a couple of these to us today as a prayer, as a reflection, as a beginning of this conversation with the one who created us. In some ways, it's a retelling of the scripture we've heard. In other ways, it speaks slightly differently. Our communal response together, and you'll, you'll, you'll catch where this is, our communal response together at the end of each part of creation is, and God said that it was good. So this first prayer is prayers for the morning. And the first morning, God said, let there be birds. And God separated voice from voice. And in some voices, God put a song. And the song sang to the land and to the light and to the light on the land. And when the people heard it, the morning had begun, the first morning. And God, and God said, said it, was it was good. good. On the second morning, God said, there will be dreams from the night that will need the light of the morning. And so God put wisdom in the early hours, the second morning. And God, and God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the third morning, God said, let there be a certain kind of light that can only be seen in the morning. And God created gold and dew and horizons and hills in the distance and faces that look different in the light of the morning and things that look different in the light of the morning, the third morning. And God, and God said, said that, that it was good. good. 
And on the fourth morning, God says, sometimes the day will be long. Let there be warmth in the morning. Let people sleep for some mornings and let the rest of the morning be good. The fourth morning. And, and God, God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the fifth morning, God said, there will be people who will rise early every morning, whose day will begin in the night by the light of the moon and the stars. They will see the sunrise, these early risers. And God put a softness at the heart of the dawn, the fifth morning. And, and God, God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the sixth morning, God listened. And there were people working and people struggling to get out of bed and there were people making love and people making sandwiches. There were people dreading the day and people glad that the night was over and God hoped they'd survive. And God shone light and made clouds and rain and rainbows and toast and coffee, places to love the light and places to hide from the light, small corners to accompany the lonely, the joyous, the needy and the needed, the sixth morning. And God said that it was good. And on the last morning, God rested. And the rest was good. The rest was very good. And God said, said that, it that it was, was very good. good. And a prayer for the night. On the first night, God said, let there be darkness. And God separated light from dark. And in the dark, the land rested. The people slept. And the plants breathed. The world retreated the first night, and, and God, God said, said that, that it, it was good. good. On the second night, God said, there will be conversations that happen in the dark that can't happen in the day. The second night, and, and God, God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the third night, God said, let there be things that can only be seen by night. And God created stars and insects and luminescence the third night. And God, God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the fourth night, God said, Some things that happen in the harsh light of day will be troubled. Let there be a time of rest to escape from the raw light the fourth night. And, and God, God said, said that, that it, it was, was good. good. And on the fifth night, God said, There will be people who will work by night, whose light will be silver, whose sleep will be by day, and whose labor will be late. And God put softness at the heart of the darkness the fifth night, and, and God, God said, said that, that it was good. good. And on the sixth night, God listened, and there were people working, and people crying, and people seeking shadow, and people telling secrets, and people aching for company. There were people aching for space, and people aching for solace, and God hoped that they'd survive, and God made twilight, the shafts of green to hang from the dark skies, small comforts to accompany the lonely, the joyous, the needy, and the needed, the sixth night, and God said that it was good. And on the last night, God rested, and the rest was good. The rest was very good. And God, God said, said that it, it was, was very good. Friends, God creates, and it is good. And God meets us here knowing that we can't do this work we were created to do, this work of loving each other, this work of creating community. God knows we can't do it alone. And so we come to this table, to this feast, to this table of grace, where God meets us, wherever we are. And this table is God's table. It is not ours of this faith community or the United Methodist Church. It is big and wide and all are invited. As we prepare to come to this table of God's grace, prepare to be recreated in God's image, to be restored to what God would have us to be, we have a prayer of confession that opens up our hearts and allows God in. Let's read this together. God of all creation, you created us in your own image to love and be loved. Forgive us when we turn away from that image in ourselves and others. Forgive us when we do harm to what you created and declared good. Come alongside us, heal us, turn us towards you and each other. Hear this good news. God's creating, God's redeeming, and God's sustaining love is with us now and always. We are forgiven and free to love and to be loved. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
And as forgiven and freed and reconciled people of Jesus Christ, we invite you to share that peace and love of Christ with each other, either in the comments or here in the room. It's okay if there's a little holy chaos. The peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. We give thanks to God, the creator and sustainer of all, who formed us in God's own image and breathed life into us, who loves us eternally, even when we turn away, who delivers us from our brokenness, and we praise God for the gift of God's only Son, Jesus the Christ, who was, mo who was anointed by the Holy Spirit, who healed the sick and set free those who were oppressed, who fed the hungry and welcomed sinners, who delivered us from slavery to sin and death, who gave us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on that night that Jesus was betrayed, he met in the upper room with his disciples to celebrate the Passover. He meant to celebrate the, with them the the abiding presence of God, that God had delivered them from each and every trial that they'd been through in their lives. And sometimes those trials lasted for many, many years, and yet God was always there. And it was during that meal that Jesus had taken a moment to get on his knees and wash the feet of his disciples to show them what it means to truly be a servant leader. In order to, to lead, you truly have to be able to serve first. And when the meal was finished, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. To love one another as I have loved you. And that is a command for each of us as well. To seek to love one another as God has loved us. To show grace and forgiveness and peace and reconciliation to the best of our ability with the power of the Holy Spirit to each and every person that you meet. But during that meal, Jesus had picked up some of the bread and after giving thanks for it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In a similar way, he took the cup. And he said, This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, as Christ first lifted that bread long ago, we lift ours today. We lift it high knowing and trusting the power of the Holy Spirit that brings us together as one body. As Christ had lifted the cup so long ago, representing the covenant between Christ and the church and the people, all raise their cups individually as we do today, marking the fact that the Holy Spirit will draw us into one body, that we are one body through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of crackers and juice and whatever is gathered on the altars of those worshiping with us online now or in the future. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit encompasses them and as we receive them into ourselves, we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ so that we may be the hands of Christ to the world, that we may go forth from this place doing the things we're called to do, serving those who are least in the lost, helping those who are oppressed and, and downtrodden and being messengers of God's grace to all. These things we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we pause briefly to bless our meal together in one voice. Let us pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we feast. For those who are worshiping online, we invite you to partake now as you hear these words. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen.
the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Body of Christ given for you. Amen. Of salvation given for you. All is prepared for those who are worshiping online. We invite you to have this time of joyful reflection for those in the space. We invite you to come forward in the direction of the ushers to receive, to kneel, to light candles.
And now, with grateful hearts, we offer our prayers and our gifts and ourselves to God. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks for this holy mystery, mystery in which you have given yourself to us, one body gathered in you. We offer you ourselves now in gratitude and love. All that we are and all that we have come freely from you. Grant now that we may go into our days in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us stand and sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. closing song is O God Who Shaped Creation. And if you looked at 443, you may be confused because we're singing it to a different tune. So let's, the words will be helpful to you. O God Who Shaped Creation. are healed. You claim us as your children. You strip our prideful shame. With freedom born of mercy, we bless your holy name. Amen. Friends, we don't simply live the season of green in this time of worship. We live it in each of our days, and so as we prepare to disperse, my invitation, our invitation, is to allow God to dwell with us, allow God to see, help us see through the green as we go out and prepare to meet the world with love and grace. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, I pray a blessing over each and every person here and every family they represent and every father that's done the things they've been called to do to take care of their families. I pray that as we go out into the world that we can continue to, to create as God has created. We continue to be restored and renewed and refreshed and that as we seek this grace for ourselves, we also offer it to others that others may know of your joy and your love and your peace. These things we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.